Okay, we're going to charge the AC system on a 2000 Ford Expedition today. Um, first thing to do is to find the, uh, the service port. And the high side service port is going to be right up by the condenser here. And then the, uh, the low side is a little harder to get to though. It's buried up underneath the uh, electrical connections here on the accumulator or dryer. Uh, the good thing about the 134A system is that the, uh, the service ports are different sizes so it makes it hard to make a mistake or virtually impossible. Um, so the low side is the blue and this has got the quick disconnect so when you put it on you uh, pull the coupler back and make sure it engages you can make sure that it stays on. Alright and then the High side would be the red, goes on the larger service port. Okay, it's normal for a little bit of that to escape whenever you um, put the coupler on, on this style coupler. Um, you can see that this system does have plenty of oil in it. It's got the UV dye, if you can see the color. So that's helpful if there is any leaks in the system. You'll be able to see the uh, the green fluorescent dye. Um, you can see it pretty easily this type uh, with with your naked eye, uh, but you can also use a black light, and that that helps you uh, determine where a leak may be as well. So first thing I want to do is um, when we look at the ambient or the, um, the static pressures rather, it's um, about 90 degrees ambient temperature today. Uh, so the the readings on, on just the static pressure on both sides are equal. Um, it's reading about 115, which indicates pretty much a full system, by the way. Um, but we'll go ahead and start it up, and we're going to put it on max AC and on high speed. And max AC or recirculate, depending on what vehicle you're working on. And that just makes it the, the coldest that it can be, so we can see what the maximum uh, coldest temperature is that we can get. Okay, so what we're doing is putting the AC on maximum cold, and um, you can see the readings we've got set on max AC, and the coldest setting that it'll go to in this vehicle it reads as 60. Um, we do have the rear AC on as well, and it's all all the way down as cold as it can. It. Um, we have a uh, just a simple thermometer in the, uh, the dash vent there. Usually, when I'm checking the um, the temperature in the in the vent, you want it about as close as to the uh, evaporator as you can get. Um, and I, and I prefer the inside vent as opposed to the outside. Uh, I believe that's usually about the coldest uh, temperature that you'll get coming out of any of the vents. The further away from the evaporator, naturally the, the warmer the air may be, uh, just because it will cool down a little bit uh, from radiant heat going through the ducts and all. Alright, so we're going to go out and see what kind of readings we have. Alright, so just at idle, um, we've got some AC uh, pressure readings now. You can see that it's about 50 on the low side, about 225 on the high side. Now if we give it a little bit of gas, um, normally I'll, I'll check the readings at about 1500 RPM or so. I saw the, the low side go is about 40. Um, this is one of those cases where adding more Freon may not necessarily be the right thing to do. Uh, if you add more Freon, then those readings are necessarily just going to go up higher. And uh, adding Freon when you don't need it is not going to be helpful. So we're going to do a little further looking on this before we decide to do anything. Um, 
And that's why it's good to have an AC gauge set and checking the, uh, the readings rather than just going to the parts store and buying a, uh, a hose that will allow you just to add Freon and you have no idea what the readings are. Uh, because uh, one of the main causes of AC not cooling well is from low refrigerant, but that doesn't mean that it's always the case. Okay, I can, I can see it. It looks like it is closed. Like closing off the air to the outside. Okay. 